Hello all and welcome back to another episode in the iOS pen testing series. In this episode we're going to go through the broken cryptography uh, section of the app. Um, and for, to do this we're going to use Frida and Objection. We're going to use it, we're going to do two different ways of the same goal, going to, of achieving the same goal. Um, the first thing we're going to do is use a script that I've written to bypass the uh, to bypass the checks to retrieve the cryptography key. This could be used for things like end-to-end uh, -end encryption, if there's an end-to-end -end encryption system. Uh, this could be used for any sort of local encryption storage or even encrypted traffic going over the network. So this that, that could be encrypted HTTP requests, uh, could be, yeah, a number of things. So without further ado, we will hop into the iOS app and we will get going. So I'm just going to quickly start the screen recording. And then we're just going to open up the DVI-A app and we can navigate down to broken cryptography. Uh, the only reason I chose this uh, this challenge was just because it, it sort of suited free to the best. Um, I could have done it with a number of other challenges, but th th we'll go with this one for now. Um, so, as it says, enter a password when you visit the challenge page for the first time, then exploit the weakness in the encryption method being used to get the password back from the application. So that's exactly what we'll do. Click on challenge one, and here we'll enter a password of test. Uh, welcome returning user, enter your password to log in. We'll type in test again. You're logged in. Great. Just see what it did. Now, let's go over to the laptop and we can start tracing the functions. So we can do frida-ps a and we can grep for dvia, and we'll grab the PID there. Next thing, we will grab the, uh, we'll trace the calls. So I've already done it here. Wait, 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 let me just remove all that. And actually, before I do that, just to explain what that, uh, that, that command does is free to trace will hook into the um, a lot of the or a lot of any uh, iOS calls or, or Android calls or whatever you're doing but in this case iOS calls uh, dash u just means to do USB dash m is just for a I, I believe dash m is the uh, objective C method yep and then we're looking for anything, whether it's a class instance or whether it's a um, function call or whatever. We're, we're checking it here and we're just finding anything that starts with crypt. So that could be cryptography, it could be crypto, it could be uh, encryption, etc. And then we're just hooking in on the PID of 15929. Obviously yours would be different. And it hooks into all these methods. And so if we go back to the iPad now, and we, we can see here, if we type in test again, it hooked into it, and it's found us some encryption uh, classes. So if we look into here, we should see some sort of interesting um, methods, you know, encryption salt, uh, HMAC salt, IV, etc. And if we go and enter something else, it will enter something wrong into the into the app now. And we get, oops, that's incorrect. Okay, great. So now, what does it check for? So here we can see it is checked, or it's used an encryption key. It's got settings, it's got a password, it sets an encryption key, it sets a HMAC key, uh, yeah, it does a lot of other things. So one thing we can do now, is if we vim the template.js and I can put this, I can put a link to this down below. Um, I didn't necessarily write all of this, I refactored it so it suited my needs, but it is from a third party website and I will, again, I will link that down below. So all this does is it checks the Objective C is available, uh, so we can actually use the Objective C hooking system. This is the class name that we'll be using, so in this case, I believe it was our encryption or, or something along those lines and the function name is again the function name that relates to that instance or that class uh, we want to hook that method that we're specifying up here and then we can go down and uh, when it enters that function so when that function gets called uh, at the moment we're just printing out the, the, the method name and the class name but we'll, we'll 
also print out the arguments later just to uh, see what's going on. And then when it leaves the function, uh, it will create this, it will enter this hook here. And at the moment it will print the, or it will console.log the, the return value. However, the return value is an object, so we will have to uh, print it as a string so we can make it a human readable. Now, Frida has got a huge API of different sort of function calls you can do. Uh, if, for example, if the application returns a pointer or returns a memory address, you can read it from memory. It's, it's got a vast API that you can use. I, I recommend go checking it out. But for now, we will go back to this. So, what is it? Our, our decryptor. So, if we have a look for our decryptor in our template. Put that in there. And it was a password, for example. Now we can run Frida. Uh, just the template.js. And now, for example, if we do anything again, we get the return value. So we, this this is hooked into the the class. It's hooked into uh, our our application, and it's found the method name that was specified up here, which was just setting a password somewhere, just here. Um, and then we hooked into it. We we got the return value, but it's not very good. We do, we can't see what it is. It's just a bunch of nothing at the moment, really. So we'll exit out of this, and we'll go back into our template. So I don't believe there is any arguments to this, and I can show you a method in a second using objection how to check whether the class has, or sorry, whether the method has any arguments. Um, but what we can do is just type args here. We can just print them out as args. Uh, we can do the same, uh, but we can do the same as what we do in the return value in a minute, which is casting it to, an, to a string. However, if we do that, it may not. It might. May, it might just crash the application due to it not being sort of stringifiable. I know that's not a word, but I'm going to use that as a word. Um, so I will put that there, and I will show you now in a second. Sorry, I'm going to do this. So what we need to do here, as I mentioned, it was an object. So we actually need to cast the object to a string, and we can read the output properly. We run that again, go back into our application and we type asset. So yeah, this is kind of what I was saying. Um, it, it grabs the password, right, sorry, it hooks the password. It gives you the actual encryption password that it, that it was, um, but it doesn't like the arguments. So that's probably because there are no arguments to this function. So what we can do, what we get, what we'll do is just comment, or we'll just delete this for now. So then we can just run that again. Press enter again. There we go. Yep. So it was that issue. Um, so moving on from there, we can run the trace again. So it, if you've got a lot of functions to trace, it can take a little while to begin with. Uh, but once it's traced them all, it actually creates a, uh, a folder called handlers. And in there, you can go into there and go, OK, I want to check for, uh, let's go for CK encrypted data. And let's just, oops. Well, we'll enter this one. And now every time this is called, you'll see that it, it hits this method. Um, and also on the, it will, obviously it won't print anything that enough to that, but it, if you put something there, then it would. Um, so that's really handy. Uh, and you don't necessarily need it to, you don't need to stop your tracing when you're editing these uh, files. It, if you save it, it will happen in real time. And so any, any changes you do, you can see it reflected within the application. But we don't want really to deal with that for a minute. Uh, the only other thing I was going to say about this before we move on was in here somewhere. Let's just press OK again. We get an encryption key. So I just want to show you the encryption key. 
Thanks. No, we want to do template.js. Uh, and so up here. Go back up to here. So this this video is going to be a bit all over the place. We hit it again, and there we go. We've got the encryption key. So you could, as long as you remove all these spaces and whatnot, it will just be a hex string. So you could try and see if that is just ASCII hex or whether it's something else. But for our purposes, I'm just showing you how it's done. So yeah, with that, we could then go back and, and reverse engineer the, the how it's done. Uh, how, sorry, how the encryption was made, but that's kind of out of the scope of what I was trying to show you. I was just trying to show you how to grab this data. Um, I think that's probably it for this part, but what I will show you is if we go into objection again, we can go into iOS hooking. Now, iOS hooking has a few different things you can do. Um, one of my favorite things is just to list all of the classes. And that will list everything. Uh, so if you wanted to list them and put them to a file, you could do something like uh, I can't even remember what. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So if you wanted to post them to a file, you could do this. Uh, instead of explore, you could do run and do iOS hooking list classes. Uh, obviously, that's great if you want to go and then just quickly look up to see whether there's a whether there's a, a certain class in there or whether you're looking for something like a, a certain name. For example, our, our crypt encryption uh, classes, that could have been a way of finding them. Obviously, free to trace in that case was easy because I knew roughly what I was looking for. Uh, but other than that, we can do something like iOS hooking... Um, and we want to watch method. So I want to look for everything and look for crypt and all methods. So now anytime that a function gets called, it is case sensitive, so you have to kind of be, uh, be, be a bit a little be a little bit careful with this. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something here. Our encryptor. So let's just look for that one ex specifically. So what we can do here is just put match for anything and then do rn crypto and then any uh, any method within that class and we can do the we can dump the arguments and we can also dump the return value. We can also dump the backtrace, but I rarely see the, the point in that. So there we go. Um, as you can see, it does it objection. Objection does make that a lot easier, uh, at least to the extent where you can see what's going on. And here it says zero arguments are, are going on. Um, however, it doesn't deal well with things like casting it to a string. You can't do that, so you have to write a script manually to do that. Um, so there's sort of pros and cons of doing both. Um, but I think that will do it for this section of the video. I'm going to make a part two of this video to go through challenge two and do a bit of a deeper dive into some of the nuances of Frida. Um, but anyway, have a great day. And if again, if you've learned anything, like go ahead and subscribe, do all the fun stuff uh, and drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought about it.